So I recently joined the Arduino forum and started chatting with folks about how to help them get their programs working right and stuff. And I realized that one of the really difficult concepts that people seem to have trouble with is how to basically create a state machine. Um, and that's a very common answer actually given to people who ask questions is, okay, dude, you gotta create a state machine. Go look at the blink without delay example. And I think that's a really good answer. I think that's helpful that, you know, okay, yeah, blink without delay is what you need to understand in order to do what you want to do. But a little explanation of why we do things the way that we do with microcontrollers might help. And blink without delay is absolutely fundamental. It's fundamental that you understand how this works if you want your microcontroller to be able to control more than one thing. Um, and if you want to keep your timing, you know, going along the, the way that, that it should. And if you just want to adhere to sort of best practices in microcontroller programming world, you're going to have to understand how to use the blink without delay example to explain a state machine. Okay, so here's a little explanation of the problem and why we have to do things this way. So first here's a timeline. So this is when the Arduino turns on, right? So it's, it turns on and then one second goes by, two seconds go by, three seconds go by, four seconds go by, etc. So if we're just blinking one LED, then we can turn it on right here, and then we can just wait until one second goes by, then we can turn it off, right? And then just wait until one second goes by, then turn it on again, right? So let's say this is on, off, on, Right, off, on, off. Right, so now let's say we have another LED and we want to blink that LED every two seconds. Well, we could go like this, right? Turn it on, then wait two seconds, turn it off, wait two seconds, turn it on, wait two seconds, turn it off. Right? The problem is, if we wait two seconds, we're going to miss the time when we need to turn this one on. So you can't just say, turn this on and then delay and wait because you're going to miss the time here. Now if we, if we did it here, we could go, okay, delay, turn this one off, delay, turn this one on and turn that one off. Right? That works because we have some synchronization here. But if we do it so that it's more like, oh, you know, two-thirds of a second, then what we have is times here, 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 all through there. So we can't just wait for one LED to change. We've got to be able to react independently to different events based on the timeline. So that's what the code does. It uses the timeline to decide when do we react to the event. Here, here, then here again, then here again, here, then here again. So that's what we can do if we use the blink without delay example. We can control multiple devices and we don't have one device waiting on another one. So we don't have delay happening here and so that we miss the time for that one. Okay, so here's a look at the code, and I just wanted to go through some basic things that are on the screen here. First of all, you know, I defined some constants. These are the pins that I wired up my LEDs to, 11 for the green one and 12 for the red one. Um, I set some variables here. These variables are to hold the state that I talked about. Remember, this is a state machine, so I'm managing these two variables. That's Those are the important ones. Initially, I set them to high here and then 
I need to keep track of when do I need to change states. So I need to keep track of when was the last time I changed the red state and when was the last time I changed the state of the green LED. And I also have this here for how, you know, just to make it easy to change the rates. So the setup function is very simple. I just set the pins both to output. Um, everyone should be familiar with that. That's all I need to do for setup. And I want to skip over the loop here. Go down to the last bit of code. I want to go down to the code here. I wrote some functions. Basically what these do basically what these functions do is if the LED is on it turns it off and if the LED is off it turns it on, right? So this is an expression here. This is a conditional a ternary operator expression so if the expression here is true then the whole statement returns the first value if the expression here is false the whole statement returns the second value so when the red LED is on high it changes it to low it just sets that state then it writes that state so this accomplishes toggling the LEDs this makes the loop code a lot easier to understand because here's what we do every time through the loop now remember this is running over and over as fast as it can go through so every time through the loop we capture the current time in there's a reason for that it's there's a reason why we, we do this instead of checking it here um, and that's because the time can change so if I want my LEDs to, to kind of be synchronous when they're supposed to be, then what I'm going to do is capture this time and use that time as the current time for the whole function. So that, per, that helps me because then I don't have to execute this again, which takes time. All I have to do is check this memory location. So. All we do is check to see if it's time to change the green LED yet. And that is, alright, if the time elapsed from now to the previous time is greater than our interval, we're going to call that function, toggle the LED, right? Now, every time we toggle the LED, we want to store that time. So, okay, use the current time that we established up here and store that as the last time we toggled. Same thing for the red one. Very simple. All we do is toggle the state of the LED when it's the right time to do so. Then we save the fact that we did that. So this is a very simple program that manages the state of those two devices. And those couldn't, could be anything. They don't have to be LEDs. They could be motors or whatever. Um, as long as you understand that every time through the loop, you know, you need to do this check. Is it time to change it? Is it time to change it? Is it time to change it? And most of the time, this will actually be false and none of this, you know, none of this code in here will actually be run. Uh, most of the time that you go through the loop, it's just going to do this check and, and jump out because it doesn't, it doesn't need to change anything. So now I wanted to show you a refactoring of this code that'll make it a little easier to understand how you can manage multiple devices. So maybe I have one LED that blinks on a time interval and maybe I have one that reacts to a button or something like that or to a sensor or whatever. Here's what I would suggest doing to refactor your code to do that kind of thing. So here's an example of refactoring the code so that it's much easier to understand what's going on. Uh, basically, I, I put all of the functionality for managing the green LED down into this one function. Right? So here it is, current millis, 
I changed to a global variable that is constantly updated each time through the loop. Um, so is this previous Millie's green. And so is that. That's a green LED. So these are all global variables. So it checks the globals. And if it's time to change, it drops into this block, records the current time, and then changes the state, writes the pin. So this is everything I need to do to manage the green LED. And as long as I have somebody updating this this variable here, then it'll work fine. So the red one does the same thing, right? It uses that same variable. So as long as we have somebody updating that variable, we're good to go. And then all you have to do in the loop, capture that variable, and then call these two functions, manage our devices. Now this could be anything down here. So if you can figure out how to manage a motor based on the current time code and some variables that you choose to store, you could change this to manage motor, right? So this is how to create a state machine. All you do is manage the state of something every time through the loop. If you can figure out how to do that you're golden. 